There we have, and there look, who's sitting at Treehouse Dam. So my hunch to come check Treehouse Dam has paid off with the baboons heading south. The leopard has headed north, and there comes Hosanna, and he's now lying at his other favorite spot. If it's not at Twin Dams, where he lies on the dam wall. Yes, Hardy Die, I know there's a leopard. Thank you very much. You've warned us. You've told us. Thank you. You can keep quiet now. Yes, there we go. Hardy Die is now going to carry on shouting. But Hosanna, is, this is his other favorite spot. He loves this log that has fallen over at treehouse dam so i'm super glad that we came in this direction to come and check for him so what a wonderful surprise and the con streak continues if it i think if it wasn't for hosana we wouldn't have gone about three days with outer cat but he has been such a solid performer for us over the last few weeks we really have been so fortunate in that he's spent a lot of time around these dams and he keeps lying right out in the open where it's easy to find him and we've had the best time with this little cat so isn't that a sight for sore eyes and like i say our run continues so taylor unfortunately you've lost the sunset and now you've lost the big cat challenge too so we've really hammered taylor today and we'll have to give her something <laughs> to cheer her up no, i'm sure taylor's just fine and we mean it with the utmost jest i really i know what it's like when it's a little bit quiet and i was stressing a little bit because if we came to treehouse and he wasn't here i was really not sure where this cat could have gone to i wasn't 100 percent sure if he may have crossed south but given that i checked south and he wasn't there's no tracks crossing over gari main the only other place he could have gone was either the Mulawati or Treehouse Dam. And luckily for us, there he sits at the dam right out in the open. So what a wonderful surprise it is to see our little boy. He's starting to yawn, which means maybe, just maybe, he might get up and start moving. Hello, big boy. He is looking really good, though. He's busy watching some Egyptian geese that are on the other side of the water hole. That's what he was watching moving around. You can see... Imagine having a noisy neighbor like the hardy doll all the time. In fact, I can imagine that because where I used to live in Johannesburg, those hardy dolls used to land on my windowsill and cry like that at 4 o'clock in the morning. And it was not very pleasant. So I can sympathize with you, Hosanna. I know that shouting and that wah every two seconds like that is not that pleasant. So I'm pretty sure Hosanna will hope that it keeps quiet. Now, what he might want is the Egyptian geese to come round. <laughs> so Taylor McCurdy is saying that her feelings are hurt and that she's going to adopt the fetal position and cry herself to sleep tonight. Taylor McCurdy, there's no need for that at all. We are just joking. And if anybody can find a cat on the way home, it will be Taylor Mac. And I'm pretty sure she's going to get something epic to make up for her day. But I think Hassan is going to stalk this Egyptian goose. There's an Egyptian goose that is slowly walking in this direction. His eyes are fixed on it and he's just bowing his head down below and watching the Egyptian goose. So there's the Egyptian goose right there. And oh, Egyptian goose has decided, no, hang on, there's something not right. I'm going to change my mind and move off. Now, a leopard will hunt an Egyptian goose. I have seen Tandi's youngest cub, Wabi Yiza, grab an Egyptian goose once at Chitra Dam. So they do go after them from time to time. And you can see there's a big sigh as if to say, come on, Egyptian goose, come closer, don't walk away. And the Egyptian goose is not listening at all now also taylor mccurdy's got nothing to complain about now that i'm thinking about it sorry my my little hamster takes a while to catch up on its wheel it sometimes turns a little slower than it should but she's got nothing to complain about i do believe last night she saw two bat-eared foxes now i am very envious in that she's gotten to see bat-eared fox she's also been seeing the cheetahs regularly so she's got really no reason to complain and no reason to be crying herself to sleep she's having a wonderful time that side and seen so many amazing things judging by the instagram posts and the photos that i've seen on her pages she seems to be having a really really good time and seen a lot of amazing things so you know she's she's also not doing too badly herself and while we have been lucky with leopards it's not always going to be this way oh, big yawn I think he's going to start thinking about moving. I think you're going to see a bit of grooming happening. Then I think he's going to start waking up and heading maybe hopefully down for a drink. Imagine if he comes down to drink in this light will just put a bit of light on him and it will be beautiful with the reflection because Treehouse Dam is still, 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 still. The wind has dropped completely. There's the odd insect that is busy hatching. Lots of mosquitoes around. In fact, when we got into Rusty this afternoon, it was like a cloud coming out of it. There was all the mosquitoes from last night. And so there will be a few insects that are hatching off the water surface, but otherwise it is like glass. And if he comes to drink, we're going to get a beautiful reflection of Hosanna drinking. And hopefully he comes to a nice flat section across from us or maybe 
on this other side where the Egyptian geese are and has a drink before he starts his evening of moving around. Now talking about mosquitoes, I've even got two mosquitoes mating right next to me on my jersey. Do not mate on my jersey. I don't want mosquito larvae laid anywhere near me. Off you go. Who does that? Perfectly. I think if we'd got you earlier, it'd probably be quite a sleepy cat. So I think we've got in here just the right time to see a bit of activity. Now where he's going to go from here is going to be interesting. He's done a big kind of northward push to Biffleshook Dam and then went south to Twin Dams and now he's back here. So it's going to be interesting where he's going to go. Proud Cat Mama, happy birthday. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. You say thank you for finding a leopard on your birthday. Well, it's my absolute pleasure. I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you're having a wonderful day or continue to have, or have had a wonderful day, should I say, and continue to have a wonderful day further. And it is nice always when you have a leopard on your birthday and hopefully I will be lucky this year and have a leopard on my birthday. It's always the animal I look for on my birthday. I don't know why I like looking for them and sometimes I get lucky, sometimes I do don't. Now the rest of your question I've completely forgotten because I got so excited about your birthday and was <laughs> too busy wishing you. So I know you said something about territory but I didn't actually pick it up all. So Lou if you can repeat that. Uh, does the tail for a leopard have any specific uses? So yes the tail is used quite a lot with a leopard particularly when climbing. It just offsets the balance and it just helps to keep that cat straight when it's going up trees and especially when it's hoisting carcasses. You can imagine carcasses swing and their weight throws the leopard off a little bit and that tail will constantly move when climbing around to help with that. So they really do use their tail effectively for that. Also it will help a little bit with hunting. Look he's watching a giraffe in the distance. There's a giraffe He's got his head over the log, and then in the distance, you'll just see the head of a giraffe. There, you see it walking on the horizon. So Hosanna is watching the giraffe with a very lazy look. Now, I wonder if this giraffe is going to come down the bank towards him. But it's just so funny to see how he's watching the giraffe. It's about as lazy a look as you could have. He's got his head resting perfect. There we go. Is that the best way to see it? <laughs> Isn't he a cute cat sometimes? But the giraffe will come down and hopefully have a drink as well. It's really nice to see so many giraffe around. There's lots of tracks for them again, and we haven't seen many giraffe, and I think it's because of all the flowering bush willows. So the giraffe are coming back to feed off those, much like what we were discussing with the elephants earlier. And Hosanna is just watching it. Of course, that's not a meal for Hosanna. Hosanna, even though he is a male leopard, he's not a fully grown male leopard, and that is a massive giraffe. That is not a small giraffe by any stretch of the imagination. It looks like a young male, so I highly doubt that giraffe is going to be on the menu, even for a big male leopard. We know that Tingana and Anderson have both brought down fairly hefty giraffe, but he's still got a long way to go before he's that size and is able to do such things. So the giraffe for him, unfortunately, will just be a figment of his imagination and a pipe dream for later in life. You're far better off with the Egyptian goose, Hosanna, than you are with the giraffe. The giraffe is going to hurt you if you go after that, but can't help but look and ponder. Imagine, I would imagine he sits there almost looking at it like a big steak. You know, when you're hungry and you go past somewhere and you see some really nice food and he's kind of salivating at this massive giraffe that's walking past. He is such a beautiful cat, though. So a lot of you are commenting that I am truly the leopard whisperer. No, I I don't think so. I, like I said, I've just been so lucky. It's the time of the year as well. I'm on my own here at Juma. So, you know, if, if there had been other vehicles here, let's say Taylor or Ali or Byron, they would have taken routes that I might have driven to have found some of these cats and they would have had a lot of the sightings on their own. So the fact that I'm on my own has helped with me being able to see a lot of leopards and, and to have gone to a lot of the sightings that are around. That coupled with the fact that it's dry season, water is, is a requirement and, and particularly Hosanna and Tumba, they seem to like to hang around water and I've just really, it's just been luck. It's it's not, I mean, we've, we've tracked the odd one, but it's not been in any way, you know, that much of my kind of skill. It's, it's just, I've been lucky at the end of the day and any one of the other presenters that had been here over this period would have also seen just as many leopards and and would have really had just a special sighting. So it's 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 just a lucky thing. And, and I suppose the, the positive vibes do help and, and putting out positive thoughts and spending time looking for them, you sometimes do get rewarded. But at the end of the day, any one of the presenters at Safari Live has both the luck and the skill to pull off sightings, a plenty of any of these cats. And so 
I w- would imagine that any one of them would have seen these guys. It's it's like I say. I mean, it's it's one of those things. And and in fact, actually, a lot of that goes down to my cameramen. The cameramen have between Seb and Senza, I've been so spoiled with the two of them because they've really spotted a lot of these cats for me. They've helped me a lot with spotting uh, in areas that I might not have looked. They've got a different perspective to what I do and they really have been a huge help and it just goes to show how valuable it is to have guys that are really into it so not just looking at a camera and thinking about just filming but are really into actually kind of looking for things and being an extra pair of eyes for us so they also need to take a lot of credit for what goes on they they really are both of them very 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 enthusiastic about what we do and spotting animals and they love it just as much as what i do and and you know seb seems to be have a firm favorite in the leopards i know senzo is a lion man and i've been shoving leopards down his throat for the whole week but i think it's starting to grow on him i I think he's starting to enjoy finding the leopards because he was quite excited when we saw asana just now at the dam he was he's kind of exclaimed leopard so you know they go they need a lot of credit to those guys they really do help me a lot so thank you guys thank you senzo you're a champion Ah, take care. You, you're asking how far does a leopard, sorry, Senzo, that's my fault. I just took my foot off the brake. Um, but how far does a leopard's claws go into a tree when it's climbing up? Depends, take care, on the, on the type of tree. So some trees are denser woods than others, and therefore claws sometimes don't go as deep as they should. Also depends on the leopard. If you've got a situation where you've got um, a young cub, its claws are going to be nowhere as big as then somebody like Tingana. So the bigger the claws, obviously the deeper and, and also the more powerful the animal and the heavier the animal, the deeper those claws tend to go in the, in the ability to get traction and get up. So you'll find with the male leopards, they'll go in, I would say probably, if I think about Tingana's claws that I saw the other day, maybe at most five six millimeters um, not too deep it's not as deep as you would think remember that a lot of these trees have bark on them and so they're actually gripping onto the bark and pulling little bits of bark and the claw itself doesn't go that deep into the wood um, but in the really soft woods i think the deepest i've ever seen is probably just over a centimeter and that was in a very soft wooded tree it was in a marula that was quite young and and had been exposed by elephants stripping the bark and the wood was really primed for a leopard to climb it's also summer when there's a lot more moisture content and the wood tends to be slightly softer so there was a lot of that now we are being currently absolutely overrun by mosquitoes this is the first night since we've been out and about and the summer kind of temperatures have arrived that we've had mosquitoes but they are everywhere i can see clouds of them all around me so hopefully we don't get hammered by them they are one of the un- insects that really does like to go after me so look at Hosanna there goes the Egyptian geese with longing eyes he's watching the Egyptian geese fly off I'm sorry my boy that they didn't want to be your friends well you didn't want to be their friend either you wanted to eat them and make dinner out of them so he's kind of longingly looking at these Egyptian geese just disappearing into the distance but how beautiful is Treehouse Dam it really is a wonderful place to view leopards it's open it's clear there's some nice tall trees around it, and we often get that setting sun. What have you seen? Oh, there's Nyala, there's Nyala, there's Nyala. Wait, 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 there's Nyala just on our right hand side that are coming. He's not, they've not seen him, but he's watching them. Look, he's just trying to slink under the branch. Now, the Nyala have seen something, and they're a bit unsure, but there they are coming down. So, this is why he's hanging around dams lately. He's getting. A lot of opportunities to hunt. Now, if he's just clever and he keeps his head down and he stays still and keeps his tail from moving, he might just have a chance here. That Nyala knows something's up because he moved. He saw, that Nyala saw some movement and wasn't sure what was going on. But he's now got himself right up against the log. And I can promise you in the light that we've got at the moment, it is very difficult to see him. Although, those Nyala are looking intently in his direction. So there he is. Look at how he's blending. Even with the camera, it's becoming difficult to see him. So this dark, dingy light is really not easy to see. And he's going to have to hope that he sits dead still and exercises the patience that he did a few days ago when we saw him hunting those impalas. And to lay very low, not to make any noise or any movement, just to sit and wait until the Nyala are satisfied that there's nothing there. But that is pretty cool to see. So we might have sort of hunt 2.0 from the other afternoon. And I was saying that this is a good time because he's going to start getting active. It's also been a warm day, which means these Nyala need to come and drink. And they're unsure. You can see the two at the back 
um, haven't noticed him. And now even the female, she's kind of saw something, but she's not sure. Now, Hosanna has actually creeped a little bit closer. And he's waiting for them to go down to drink. Just be patient, boy. She's definitely aware something is here. But that is the distance between them at the moment. It's not very far. So he's on the far left of that screen. You can see, you can hardly see him in this light. He's completely hidden. That spotted coat is blending in so well. And then the Nyala notice some sort of movement and they're just watching. But look at him. He's in that exact same position that we saw him with the Impalas. Flat, low to the ground. Now he needs to just be patient and wait for them to all commit to drinking before he decides to move any further now slowly but surely they are coming down to drink and in fact they have started drinking you can see he's popping his head up now he's getting ready to try and position himself again once all the heads go down and they're drinking he can then move and try and work out a way to get closer but at the moment he's just watching and checking there we go you see he's trying to creep the nyala are drinking now so they're all heads down but he doesn't really have much to work with here. He's unfortunate that the Nyala have drank where they have. Hopefully for him, once they finish drinking, they walk towards him. That's his only option that he's got. Um, otherwise, he's going to have a bit of a tough time of it because where he is currently is not great at all. And also, I want to try and take my light off him because I don't want those Nyala to see. So I'm sorry if it gets a little bit darker, but I don't want that. Look, there he's crawling. So he's into that leopard crawl again. Now, leopards have different collarbones to other animals. And then they have a floating collarbone. And that allows them basically to push their tummy right down onto the ground. Push their hips up. And they can then crawl on their tummy and keep their profile low. But this Nyala knows something's not quite right. It's much like the Impalas the other day. This Nyala is aware that, hang on a second. There is something that keeps kind of catching my eye. I'm not sure what it is. But she is definitely unsure. Now, come if these Nyala move around the dam... And head closer towards where Hosanna is, they're going to be in a lot of trouble because he's going to have the, the run on them. But I don't think they will. I think they're going to go back the way they came. Yep, that female is very nervous. She knows, hang on, something's not right here. I'm going to go back the way I came. That's the safest route. And there they go up the bank. Now, whether Hosanna is going to follow is going to be interesting. Although she's turning, I wonder where she's going to go. I cannot believe how many mosquitoes are around us though. It is quite phenomenal to see them. There is clouds and clouds and clouds of them. I'm sorry that it's very dark. We don't have our IR on just yet. We haven't had time to put it on and unfortunately I don't want to shine lights on him or the Nyala. So I know it is a little bit on the dark side but please bear with us. We'll try and put our lights on once the Nyala have left. And we'll be able to then see him a little bit better. But the Nyala are clever. They're going exactly the route they've come, knowing that that's a safe place that they've come from. So now I can put on my light again and just give him a bit more sort of color because they've drifted away. So they are no longer even facing him. He's going to have to try and find himself a better place to try and stalk. And maybe once they go around the corner and they drift off into the thicket, he might then start to pursue them. Sorry, my boy, it didn't quite work out for you. You were close again, but had the, had the idea again. It's just he's got to hope for that they come a little bit closer to drink than what they did, unfortunately. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure of that we are going to find Hosanna on a kill at one of these dams within the next week. I'm pretty sure about it. He's learning valuable lessons every time, and he is starting to work out that this is where he needs to be in the afternoons. And it's why we're finding him a lot at these dams, is because in the afternoons, he knows animals come to drink, particularly in warm weather, and this is the best place to be, is to sit in these dams, wait and watch, and soon things come. Now, what have you spotted above you? He's kind of looking up into the trees to see what's going on. So Senzo is going to go into IR, so you'll see the color will go away. We'll go black and white, and it will help us see a lot better. There we go. That's going to be a lot better. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the IR light, so it will still be a little bit kind of noisy. But once we have a chance to put the IR light on, it will be much better. Yawning, which means that, again, I think he is going to move. Hopefully, it is to come drink. That would be ideal. Although, at this stage, it seems as though he's still contemplating which way he's going to go in order to hunt his Nyala. Christine, you're saying Hosanna is such a patient boy. He is, isn't he? I've been absolutely amazed by the patience he's shown over the last little bit. He's really matured as an individual. He's no longer that little boy that kind of rushes out and tries to go after anything and chase everything. He's working out techniques 
day by day and he seems to be getting a lot more successful with how he's approaching hunting he seems to have worked out that dams are the way to go at the moment that there's lots of food items that are coming down towards waterholes and that if he uses the banks and the undulating terrain of these waterholes that there is a chance that he can hunt and that he needs to just be patient and the time will come he might have 10 hunts like this where he misses and he doesn't even get to chase but there will be a day where they're going to come straight towards him and he's going to have them right at his basically his doorstep and he'll be able to grab one so this is all great training even though that you can't constitute as a proper hunt he's just stalked and he's working out so it's a lesson that has been learned from what he's just done it wasn't actually a hunt and, and a failure it's it's more a lesson he didn't really have much of a chance given how open it was between him and the nyala so he did the best he could and that's okay he, like i say he's going to have gleaned valuable information from that and will learn in terms of how to hunt around treehouse the next time he's here so really good to see and, and and he's fast becoming a very clever little cat and streetwise is probably the way i would describe him and maybe that being on his own and having the mother that he's had really has prepped him to be the way he is you can see he's being driven mad by the mosquitoes just as much as we are he's biting about and l sort of lashing out at them scratching so i think he's having his own mosquito problems that we are having as well this side of the world Kimberly, you hope that Hosanna gets some supper soon. Well, I think he's still feeding. I mean, at the end of the day, he's not emaciated by any stretch of the imagination. So I think he's catching smaller mammals at night. So things like scrub hares and varying other smaller mammals that we see, things like steenbok maybe, um, even tortoises he'll go after, the odd terrapin, maybe birds in between all of that. So I think he's sustaining himself on those. But yes, it would be really nice for him to grab himself a big impala like he had the, when I started uh, a few weeks ago back from leave when he had that impala in the tree close to treehouse dam that would be ideal and first prize for Asana that's what I would really hope that he got and there's no better place to do it than at these water holes so between here and twin dams it's going to come he will find one at some point and when he does hopefully we'll be here to find it or to film it at least and see him with his dinner it would be really nice to come around the corner and have him up in a tree with a big impala Isn't he beautiful though? Now unfortunately our Mara girls have got no signal at the moment so you're going to be with me and enjoy Hosanna for longer. Uh, Pelin, the biggest thing that I've ever seen a leopard catch is a two-year-old giraffe which was massive so that was Tingana that caught that um, with Moya. He was mating with Moya and he managed to uh, catch a two-year-old giraffe which was really a massive massive meal i've got a photo of it somewhere i will try and find it somewhere for you and, and be able to show you exactly what i'm talking about um so that's the biggest the smallest termites so i've seen it leopards feeding off winged allets which is the smallest thing so between the two they will go after both now he seems to be interested in something else i wonder if there's something else that is approaching this area and Oh, there's a diker. So he's stalking a diker now. There's a diker straight in front of me that's coming down for water as well. So it's just on the edge of a thicket and it's slowly but surely making its way down towards the water as we speak. So, so you will have a little bit, unfortunately, of darkness because of the lights that's gone off and will be in infrared. But like I said, we don't have our infrared light, so it's not going to be 100%. But we'll still be able to see what goes on. The diker is heading straight towards me and it's hopefully going to come out of a thicket. Right now we won't see much of it because it's just behind a bush but it should be slowly but surely coming down to drink and have water and so hopefully that's what's going to happen and Hosanna will be able to stalk the diker. You can see though there's opportunity abounding from every direction at the moment and it'll be interesting to see where the diker has gone because I can't see it now. It was moving up towards the thicket again uh, i've lost it completely i'm not sure where it's gone but it was directly in front of me in a little grassy patch i just saw its head bobbing around but now i can't see it at all senzo can you see it not yet so it seems as though maybe it's gone across the road the way that hosan is looking looks as though he's looking north of the dam at the moment so i wonder if he isn't just checking up that way 
Okay, so there we go. There's a light. So Senzo has done a quick fix and he's holding the IR light so that we can see her much better at night. Well done, Senzo. That's a sterling effort that you're busy doing there. It's not easy to hold a camera and a light, but he's doing it so that we can see a lot better and we can actually film what go takes place and what goes on. If you want, Senzo, I can hold the light for you if you want to be able to. Okay, so he says he's all right. Now, it seems as though Hosanna has lost interest just a little bit and is not paying as much attention to that dike. I think it's because it's not coming down for water. I think he's decided that he's not too concerned at this stage. But you see, he's still at least aware that there are things around. Look at those ears listening. There we go. Now he's starting to go. I think he's going to start creeping up back towards where where that diker went. Just getting himself a little bit of height just to see what's going on. And it is amazing. I cannot see a single thing now. It is just literally a blur on the other side of the bank. It's only because I know where he is that I can see him. Otherwise, he's completely blending in. But with the IR, we're able to see it really is quite amazing. And look how big he's getting. He's getting nice tall legs now. He's getting really quite large. Are you going to sit on your stump? No. Nope. little unsure, I think, what he wants to do at this stage. I don't know if he wants to leave the dam or if he wants to hunt the diker that was around or go back after the Nyala or where he wants to go. But he's sitting and listening and looking and I think he's hoping that something's going to come drink and he can use the cover of darkness to hunt from the edge of this water. That's what I think he's hoping for. I wonder if that's not how he killed the Impala here last time. Is that the, the one that we saw in the tree that he dragged it from the dam side. So maybe he knows if he's just patient here at night, something will arrive and he will have that opportunity to hunt and have it in his advantage by it being here at night and just spending time. So maybe he knows just to be patient and not to go wandering off into the bush and attract attention to himself by chasing things that are not really there to be chased and rather wait and be patient and let things come to him. Seems like a good strategy anyway. Right, now I'm going to try and get my IR working correctly. I believe Jamie has found some signal and not only that, but two very interesting round-eared creatures.